Hello everyone, this is Lloyd's Titan Mech from LEGO Ninjago Season 11. I'm supposed to hold back my enthusiasm at the beginning of a review, or uh, my disdain either way, and I uh, just can't quite do that this time around because this is pretty impressive. It stands over a foot tall at the center, or around 30-31 centimeters, taller than that if you include the, the uh, trans bright green bladed elements around the sides, and, you know, LEGO kind of has a bar. They have a, a set of expectations that they have put into, at least my mind, for a build. You know, what something will look like, how good it will be, what type of techniques will be used. And this mech here definitely hits that bar and surpasses it a little bit, at least to me. I am most happy and impressed by the center line of the torso, and particularly these pearl gold molded wing elements and how they were placed. They're placed there just absolutely perfectly. Interestingly, they are not able to swing freely, but they do settle right against all the pieces together. These, uh, these little modified one by one round plates help to make sure everything stays in place. But ultimately, the, the winglet elements themselves nestle right against the body, which was just very satisfying while going through the assembly process. I also like some of the sand green down below and how they've used the one by two notched uh, curved pieces to good effect to get some of the nice sharper shapes in there. It, it all comes together pretty nicely. I also like the epaulets on the, on the sides, which interestingly use prints that's a print. That's a print. That's a print. That's a print. Now, these are stickers up here, but these are prints. I did not realize that they were making a print there. Ah, I could have done without the little bit of yellow showing through there. You know, just a tiny little thing that's kind of unnecessary, but it's just part of the, the process. Lego goes through one of many stages as they're devel developing a uh, model at the end of its development cycle. They look for how many how many pieces they can make into different colors to make it easier and easier for people to find pieces as they're going through the assembly to make sure that even younger kids get success fairly quickly. I'm also pretty happy with the head, especially some of the, the small building that goes around the front of it. Now, that is able to hinge up because ultimately uh, Lloyd, you know, this is a mech, so it's going to be piloted and Lloyd is going to sit right down in there and he's got a couple of consoles just printed ones on either side comfortable enough looking seat there's how it looks with him actually in there so he's actually not that well protected at least his head but the idea there is that you're able to look at this mech and then really really zoom in on it and directly see lloyd's eyes you know you're not seeing a face of the mech you're seeing the face of the operator and it's really all about him here, which I'm okay with, but I think it would have been cooler if there was a little bit more covering around him, or at least maybe like a windscreen element or something. Now, the big question, how does this articulate? How flexible is it? Well, we got arm joints that are on the swiveling ratcheted joints that are able to move up and down, and you've got ball joints at the elbows, so this is able to flex in and out. It's got a little, little spinner right there, large Sure can. You can imagine that flying off, or you can just imagine it being used as kind of a saw blade on him. Let's see. Can I bring the arms across the body? Not really, unfortunately. Is there any way that I can kind of fake that? Not really. So, you know, up and down to the sides, forward and back. A little bit of movement around in there, including extending the elbows fully. But that's kind of the, the limit of it there. You do have fingers that are individual that can be moved in and out and there's a small receptacle there to hold on to tools or weapons such as the only one that is actually included with this set the large sword with a very tiny tassel at the end of it so that allows it to really hold on to that securely and properly it doesn't fall out easily but if you want to remove that it just slides right on out it's just going through that technic pinhole right there but it's very convenient they came up with this system a while back i'm glad that they have stuck with it because it works well and it's not too much of a of a pain. It doesn't really get in the way of of anything, and definitely does not look bad. Legs, all right. There we go. It's a big mech, so 
by, well, by example, <laughs> most of the examples that we've ever seen from LEGO, I'm not expecting to see much in the way of leg articulation. Let's see what we can get. I can move the leg forward and back. That's good. Being able to move it back is better than we've gotten sometimes. There is no articulation at the knee, unfortunately. You saw that coming. Although, you can cheat a little bit. There's a little bit of flexibility, which may be usable for some poses. You're not supposed to do this. You're, you're kind of messing with some pieces in there. But you can use that if needed. And then there are ball joints down at the ankles, and the, the feet are quite large. Now, the ball joints don't give you a whole lot of range of motion. You see, they've, they've tried to stop this from going forward and back so that it doesn't fall on its own. The shaping of the feet is not too bad. The color scheme is upheld pretty well, but there's not a whole lot that you can get in there. At least you can rotate these around. So can I put this into a walking sort of pose? That's that's the big test and the, the big question. Can I make it look like it is articulate? Oh yeah, I can bring these in and out a bit as well. Can I make it look like it's moving forward at least to some degree? Well, that depends on what you call looking like it's moving forward. But it is better than usual for a large mech. See? There is some there is some action there that's implied. There is some movement that's implied. And that's definitely Oh no! Okay, let me that's not the very best right there. If I can angle him back just the, the body, get the there we go. There we go. That feels much more stable now. So there's something. There's some flexibility. And I really like the shaping of the legs. It's it's just it's just too bad that physics kind of works against them when it comes to the, the knees and keeping things nice, nice and neat and tidy. Although some custom builders have been able to come up with solutions that work pretty well in some cases. But this is extremely heavy up top. I'm, I'm glad to be able to get something out of it. That's a lot better than usual. But I wish that I could do more with it, you know. At least it doesn't want to fall over as long as I keep keep the center of gravity in check to some degree. Let's see if I can move this arm all the way out. See, it's kind of it's kind of leaning forward right now, but it's it's not actually falling. So yeah, could be better, but it is better than usual. Looking around the back, things are built up and detailed decently well, but it is a little bit of a mess for how many pieces were used on the back build for shaping. Uh, I think, I, f I feel like the colors are all over the place to some degree. It's certainly better than it's been at some points in the past, but it's not their their best work, you know, for, for coverage and smoothness and everything. All this is pretty nice and, and elegant, and obviously these are on ball joints, so you can rotate those down if you want to retract them a bit. You can also bring them up a little bit farther than I showed to you know, make your presence felt a little bit better. I guess you can kind of angle these back if you want to do that. That's an interesting, different look, different appearance. But ultimately, all of this stuff on the back is a flyer. It's something that can be removed, that can be pulled off and used and piloted by a figure. So it just comes straight out like so, leaving you with just base torso, and that's not too bad of a look. I mean, it's a little bit flat, but considering that it is a mech and has something that connects to it there, I also like the back of the, the head and the sides of the head. I use a couple of stickers there. But that gives us this thing, which is a flyer. Just fold these wings back if you want. Do it like that or rotate it this way. Looks much better that way. That's, that's the intent right there, but you can do whatever you want, of course. You can fly it like this if you want. Looks like something from, uh, was it Nova Corp? But yeah, there's your seat right there. Put a person in the pilot seat. It has a couple of spring-loaded shooters on the sides. These are supposed to be the real in-universe shooters, but you have the spring-loaded ones to give you some some true firepower. And that's not bad. Got the thrusters out at the edges. I think it would look better or make more sense to me if I folded this back. Make it look like it goes faster, but then maybe turn it out for, for hovering or something. Yeah, it's kind of like a dragonfly almost. 
The best thing about all of this for the sake of play though, is that you can just grab it around the waist and use it as an action figure. The whole thing. I mean, this is big to be built up with Lego pieces and to be able to just grab it and not be too careful, you know? If you have something else you can fight against with this, let me do a kick right there, you know? Like, for something made out of Lego, this is this is pretty sturdy and and playable. I mean, you couldn't be this rough with a lot of stuff not too many years ago, so I definitely have much respect for the design work that went into this in terms of its its sturdiness and its heft and its usability. You know, you can make something that, that's sturdy that is really strong but then you actually get into playing with it and, or you know just messing around with it in general and the little things start to pop up as as issues as problems you know little stuff little stuff like all these things smaller details but here all this stuff that's nice detailing for the sake of detail it's it's okay though this is good this is valuable and a lot of folks that that look at things and and you know look more from the collectability and display value perspective overlook that overlook the ability to be rough with something and to actually use it as a toy and uh in that sense the designers have definitely succeeded here they've exceeded my expectations so looking at figures here's the regular season 11 version of lloyd as green ninja and Zane FS, the Forbidden Spinjitsu version. I like his color scheme there just because the trans light blue goes really well against against white. Always has. Uh, the accent color there that's the darker blue is dark azure, which is interesting. I think the print on the uh, for the sash for the, the belt there is, is not that good. It's a little bit a little bit soft around the edges. But uh, as, it, as it comes down into legs, it's not too bad. Uh, Lloyd gets two swords, so he has his his more Chinese style one from the the Ninjago movie with the tassel at the end of it, and he also gets a katana on the scabbard on the back. There are the prints on the other sides of the heads, and also an unobscured view of the torso print on the back for Lloyd. And there are their other faces. Zane also gets this Spinjitsu spinning cyclone with the dual molding there. That's light aqua, not white. It's just a very bright color with the trans light blue. And uh, just a regular clear bit for the base. And this is, well, it looks pretty nice, especially from the top. It's too bad that you're not able to really see that view very much. I guess it looks pretty good around the sides, but it's just best when you're looking through the light blue, the trans light blue, down to the aqua, where those mix. Looking at bad guys, here on the left is a blizzard warrior, and on the right is a blizzard archer. Technically, the blizzard warrior has part of the armor put on backwards here, but it is a reversible piece. Very nice dual molded pieces with the interesting combination or contrast between the trans light blue, completely crystal clear, and uh, dark red. I never expected those two to work together well, but they've separated them enough that when light comes through, it, uh, it works. It really works. The right arms are light aqua. Notice the small recolored uh, uh, shoulder armor piece for the archer on the right, put into the translucent uh, light blue. You know, it has just a little bit of frostiness to it, more of the the dual molding around the backs of these pieces they look pretty good. And there you see, they actually have the same head piece. I've just rotated them around, which allows for some easy variability between different basic units. They are using the same prints for everything else, for the torsos and the hips and the legs, but I'm okay with that. The Blizzard Swordmaster uses the same hips and legs again, but a different torso. That's good to see. Notice the little bit of metallic color that's used in there to give a little extra shine. I think the frost portions of these look a little bit flat, especially compared to the dual molded elements, but it's not bad. I like the designs overall. You know, they definitely have a proper scheme here. Now notice this one has a transparent light blue head 
and that is also printed on both sides. So you got a little bit of frost and uh, a top knot that's folded around the, the back for this one. That looks pretty good. And the very tattered cape piece. And there's that print around the back of the torso. Also, this one gets the very nice trans light blue left arm again. Hopefully they will make a right eventually. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame that the katanas were not done in a, at least a translucent light blue as well, but these are just medium azure. And finally, this is the big bad guy of this set. It's General Vex, and he gets the best stuff all put together. He also has the dual molded staff weapons like a guando, and he has the scroll of forbidden spinjitsu there which is just a vinyl piece. There are three of those to collect, but if you get any one of these sets, you actually get all three because they're printed all together onto a single sheet. So that's that's nice. But yeah, this is looking pretty good. Gunmetal gray is the major color for the armor. Dark, uh, dark gray, just regular dark gray is used for the legs on these. The weapon appears to combine uh, gunmetal gray with I can't quite tell what. It seems like it's just a translucent clear to me. I don't see any particular hue in it, but it's it's slightly marbled and gradiated out. So it's it's fairly smooth how that transitions. The torso is the one from the Sword Master, and it gets the trans light blue colored arm as well. No alternate face for him though, that's too bad. Last up, spare pieces. There aren't too many of them, and this is technically not a leftover piece. You know, it's intentional there. But, you know, you get some cool stuff here, including the other two Forbidden Spinjitsu scrolls, one of the nice medium azure katanas, and this little molded flower piece in gold. So overall, this is pretty good. And if you see the box in person, you probably say, wow, this is a very large box. Why do they have such a big box for just a Lego mech? Well... It's a big Lego mech, so just putting them side by side, I mean, put it right up against there, you know, it, it doesn't really oversell the thing. So that's pretty impressive in and of itself. I was personally expecting it to end up smaller. You do pay quite a pretty penny for this, though, $80 in the U.S. I mean, ouch. On a, on a price part basis, yeah, it's, it's very good for these days, especially for this type of thing with that many figures. There is not $80 worth of plastic here though, and I don't feel like there's $80 worth of Lego stuff here, just in terms of its volume when everything is put together. But going through the build process, I, I see it, I feel it, I understand the, the complexity that's actually there. You know, it's, it's something where, you, again, you have to actually build it, I think, to appreciate that, but just looking at the finished product, I, I can't help but say it feels a little bit overpriced though at least it is really, really good. I wish there was a little bit more articulation to the legs, just a little, and also some coverage for Lloyd's, well, his entire upper body. If you want to see the full build, choose your speed. As usual, I have the full real-time build up, and I've also done a speed build, so whichever of those you prefer, check one of them out. I will link to both of them right now and in the pinned comments, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching.